Hi, and welcome once again to Stone Soup. The world according to sci-fi geeks. And we're doing some movie reviews. Yep. Um, uh, last week, was last week? Week before last, we had a what little is? movie night. and we, we watched in three movies in one night, or one day, actually. Les Mis, The Hobbit, and Hotel Transylvania. In that order. Yeah, that's a really weird triple feature. We have eclectic and it, tastes. You know, it, it, yeah, boy, do we have eclectic tastes. And it could have played with our heads, but it didn't. Mm -hmm. We should tell you something about our heads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Nothing we're going to talk about same. The Hobbit. Yes. Um, you all have heard about The Hobbit, starred yes. uh, Martin Freeman from Sherlock mm -hmm. as Bilbo. Uh, Bilbo Baggins, bestest Hobbit ever. Well, I don't know. I'm mighty fond of Frodo. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, adore, I adore Martin Freeman. Mm -hmm. I could just eat oh, that man too. up with a spoon. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> Starting with the obvious. It does not feel the same as Lord of the Rings, but it shouldn't because The Hobbit never did. It was always a much simpler story, more aimed toward kids. So, and if you've read the book and you've mm -hmm. heard about what's going on, you may be asking yourselves, how on earth did they stretch The Hobbit, which is about that thick, into three movies? Well, they added a whole bunch of stuff, and I, I From understand. Like notes and appendices and all that happened. Yeah, they took a whole bunch of stuff. It's like a reverse liposuction. They just, yeah. <laughs> they just, yeah. <laughs> they just <laughs> took all of Tolkien's stuff that hadn't been on the screen yet and went through it and said, okay, let's throw this in and this mm -hmm. in and this in and that in. And, uh, we still have mixed feelings about it ourselves. I mean, we love the movie and all. We'll see well, I can't. I read The Hobbit 40 years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, I loved it to death, but I can't remember a single word of it, mm -hmm. except for the scene where he gets the ring. Yeah. I can kind of remember that. I, I read the book, but it wasn't 40 years ago, but it was several years ago, and I can't no, remember really? details. No, no. But I, I can't really remember the details either very well, but I do remember that they did mention the necromancer, and spoiler alert, spoiler alert, awooga, awooga, spoiler alert, Gandalf leaves the group to go get rid of him but that's all it's ever said it's never given any details it was just a plot contrivance to get gandalf out of the way so there could be plot tension because mr tolkien apparently never sat down you know set the hobbit aside and said what is it gandalf can and cannot do how powerful is he mm -hmm. And, and since he introduced him as one of the most powerful wizards ever, he kept having to send him away because he was screwing up game balance. Yep. So expanding on the necromancer, I think, was actually a good thing. You know, there was a reason to understand why Gandalf had to leave, that, that this was so much more important. Mm -hmm. This will be gotten more into the next movie, I'm sure, but the fact remains. <laughs> well, it, yeah, but, it, you know, like, it was still basically a reason to get rid of Gandalf for mm -hmm. a while. And then, and he comes back, and he comes, and they did that in Lord of the Rings too. Gandalf yeah. kept having to go off and disappear, mm -hmm. or or he had that little tiny, you know, unpleasantness with the Balrog and was gone for a while, mm -hmm. <laughs> things like that. But we digress. But we digress. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> as we said, Martin Freeman is awesome as Bilbo. Uh, Ian McKellen continues to rock as Gandalf. Bless but the man. Gandalf is his, and he's going to do it for as long as he can get up and walk. I think. Yep. And so, yay for him. Mm -hmm. The dwarves are all great. Oh, my God. And gorgeous. Oh, my God. Well, some some of, of them, yes. Some of them were so pretty. Ooh. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a wise ass behind the camera that just commented that the dwarves were somebody our size. Right. This somebody is going to suffer later. <laughs> I Not by my I, hands. <laughs> I have a rolled up newspaper, and I know how to use it. Anyway. Uh, Anywho, yes. Where was I? Um, um, oh, yes. And they, they threw in, okay, now, who was that? We were watching a review, and they were saying, what did, what did Frodo do in this movie? Not a goddamn thing. I forget. He wasn't uh. there to do something. He was there to be cute and sweet and adorable and say, hi, I'm Frodo. Uh -huh. It can connect to Lord of the Rings. Just to kind of connect and, you know, get in Lord of yeah. the Rings. That's one of the things who, they added was they, they yeah. added some more ties to Lord of the Rings, which, mm -hmm. again, I kind of agree with. Yeah. I mean, when, when, when Tolkien wrote The Hobbit, he hadn't thought up Lord of the Rings yet, so he couldn't make those connections. So they did it for him. And Andy Serkis as Gollum just, they, they've actually improved state of the art mm -hmm. in the CGI, so Gollum's even more realistic than he was yeah. before. Yeah, he was pretty realistic before. He was pretty darn realistic before. I mean, he won, didn't he win an award? Oh, uh, not Gollum? 
Not, for, not, not like an Academy Award, but some kind it's of award. It was a Golden yes. Globe, wasn't it? In, oh, on, on MTV. MTV Award. That's he, right. He, he, he best special effects. Yeah, he won it uh, for being for the uh, best CGI and, character. And I think it was best because there was him and there was Dobby and well, it might have just been him and Dobby at that point. But anyway, yeah. but anyway, yeah. I mean, it's just getting better and better, and they really, really need to just find come up with an Academy Award, award for this just kind of for thing. Andy Circus. Yes, because what he can and do through CGI is mind blowing. It really is, and if he weren't as good as he is. No, all, all the CGI in the world couldn't make Gollum as creepy as he mm -hmm. is, because that's Andy coming through. Yes, or or what he is King Kong, or or in mm. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Apes. Oh my God, have you seen Rise of the Planet of the Apes? It will blow your mind. Mm -hmm. Andy brings something real. There's a reason they keep getting him to come in and do yes. it. Yes, it's because if we need somebody to wear the suit and bring life to this thing that is going to be totally CGI. We need Andy. Yep. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he needs an award just for being Andy Circus. Yes. And now we want to present the Academy Award for being Andy Circus to Andy Circus. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, Anywho. <laughs> I am dying to hear Benedict Cumberbatch as Smog's voice, but that's not going to be for at least yeah. one more movie. Yeah. But well, it'll, it'll show up in the next movie. We saw him right yeah. at the end growling. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, well, we saw Gollum, not Gollum. Smog. Smog growling. We didn't see, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yes. We ought to do a whole piece on, uh, on, 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 on him one of these days. Mm. Not Smog, the... Yeah. Benedict, yes. Benedict. But anywho. Anyway, so, and I'm, I'm sure the purists mm -hmm. who absolutely adore The Hobbit and don't want anything changed are having fits. Yep. But I had, I loved it to pieces, and I yes. don't care. They can just go have their fits. Yep. And I gather the, the one uh, wizard who was played by Doctor Who, who uh, with, the, with the rabbits. The brown, yes. Yeah, somebody the brown. Radagast the brown. Radagast the brown. Yes. I gather he wasn't in the book, or if he was, it uh, was like he was just mentioned. Yeah, I think. Like, again, it's been long enough since we've read the book. Details? What details? <laughs> They're just not in my head anymore. Mm -hmm. I have the book. It's packed away. It's been packed away for... I have the book on my oh, shelf. What? You do? Yeah. The Hobbit? Yeah. Oh, I know where I can borrow a copy and reread it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. And My copy is packed away somewhere. God knows where. Has been we for love 25 years. We love the song, The Dwarves Sing. Oh, God, goosebumps yes. Goosebumps every time. It chills down your spine, goosebumps. You're mm -hmm. like, yes, I will sign that paper. We're, I'm going we're with you. Yeah. We're off. You understand why, why Bilbo did that. Mm -hmm. I wish they could have done the whole song that's in the book. They only did, like, two verses. You know, now that we have the tune there, people, let's get on that, shall we? Yeah. But, uh. Because that's a really cool song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But yes, you know what okay. they need to do? Not necessarily put it in the movie. Record a cast album. There you go. Because <laughs> there are a lot of songs in The Hobbit and in uh, Lord of the Rings that they should just record. Yeah. And I, I don't know if that was the singers were actually the guys playing the, the dwarves, but I bet it was. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. You totally get it. Yes. And uh, so... We can totally say, go out and see The Hobbit. And yes. if you don't like it, that's your fault, mm -hmm. not theirs. That's your problem. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's a personal problem, as my husband would say. <laughs> so, bye-bye.